Well, this morning I'm going to take a different turn, if that's okay. You know, for the last 63 weeks, we have been going verse by verse through the gospel according to Luke. The good news that Luke is telling us about the Lord Jesus Christ. Really what we've been doing is looking at the micro, looking at every word of the gospel, looking at the gospel through a microscope. Well, this morning I want us to pull back if we can, because I believe it would be easy for us to forget the big picture of the gospel. That the gospel goes all the way back to the book of Genesis in the beginning. And the gospel continues through all the way to the book of Revelation. The the gospel, the big picture of the gospel is seen on every single page of Scripture. So this morning we're going to take a break from our journey in Luke to be reminded of the big picture of the gospel. If you'll take your copy of God's Word, if you don't have one, there should be in the pew rack in front of you. And find Romans, the book of Romans, chapter 6. The book of Romans, chapter 6. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and then Romans. So right after the book of Acts is the book of Romans, chapter 6. And verse number 23. uh, Romans 6, 23, not Acts. We do that on Wednesday night. When you get to Romans 6, 23, if you're able, would you stand with me as we honor God and the reading of His Word? This is a passage of Scripture that you know by heart, probably. Romans 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. May God and His blessing to the reading and now the preaching, teaching, and your hearing to understand His holy word. May Jesus Christ, our Savior, forever be praised, and all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The big picture of the gospel. You know, it helps us sometimes to, to pull back and look at the big picture. Over the last several weeks, I've been assembling things. Assembling things for the New Family Life Center and putting things together, and and many of you have as well. And and all of those things come with instruction manuals, and I was so grateful for the ones that came with instruction manuals that had pictures in them. That really helps. And usually, one that has pictures in it, you go to the back of that instruction manual, that assembly manual, and it will have an exploded diagram where it shows the whole thing with each part pulled out. And it helps you to look at that and see the big picture. You see how all of the little pieces go together to make the whole. This morning, I want us to see, and I'm not going to to preach through every book of the Bible, but I want us to see in, in the entire Bible how there are pieces of the gospel, the good news, that all come together in the Lord Jesus Christ. To give us the good news, the gospel of our salvation. I want to begin the the text of scripture I read this morning from Romans. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. I want to begin with the first few words in that verse. For the wages of sin or the cost of sin or the penalty of sin is death. I want to begin number one with the reason we need the gospel. The reason that we need the gospel is death. How many of you realize that the statistics on death are 100%? Amen? In 100, maybe 150 years, we've got some really young people here. In 150 years, if the Lord tarries, if the Lord doesn't come back for 150 years, every person in this room will have died. That's a reality. Death is real. It's something that is in the mortal, in the natural sense, inescapable. The reason that we need the gospel is death. The reason we need the gospel is because the cost of sin or wages or penalty of sin is death. This is, of course, in the New Testament. But folks, this goes all the way back to the book of Genesis. Go all the way back, refresh your mind, all the way back to the book of Genesis with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. God created a paradise, 
a perfect place, a place where the temperature is perfect and the weather is perfect and all of your needs are met. And he placed within the Garden of Eden, this paradise of God, Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve had one command from God, had one thou shalt not. He said, you may eat of all of the trees of this garden except for one. The tree that is in the middle of the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You must not eat of it, for in the day you eat of it, surely you shall die, or surely you shall bring death into the world. Well, you know the story. You tell people they can't do something, and what? They're going to try to figure out a way to do it. So Eve was there. And uh, the serpent, the devil, tempted her and said, God was telling you a lie. If you eat of this fruit, you'll know good and evil. You won't surely die. And Eve ate the forbidden fruit and gave some to Adam. And Adam ate the forbidden fruit. And all of a sudden, the innocence that Adam and Eve had, the, the innocence, the purity, the righteousness, that they feared nothing, they were ashamed of nothing. And all of a sudden, all of that is gone. The Bible says that when they ate of that forbidden fruit, that their eyes were opened and all of a sudden they realized they were naked and they were ashamed. We don't know how long a period Adam and Eve had been in the garden before they ate of the forbidden fruit. But in that whole time they were there, they were ashamed of nothing. There was no shame in their life. There was no fear in their life. But now that they have disobeyed God and brought sin into the world, their innocence is forever lost. And shame has filled their soul. Do you remember what Adam and Eve did? Adam and Eve, because now they feel ashamed, that they went and they found some fig leaves and they tied the fig leaves together and they tried to make a covering for themselves. The, the picture you see depicted of Adam and Eve with the fig leaves, that's a pretty accurate depiction. And they tried to cover themselves with fig leaves. And the Bible says that God was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and Eve hid from God. For the, the whole other time of their life, they had had perfect fellowship with God. When God came and dwelt among them, when God was walking in the garden, Adam and Eve, I can imagine them running to see God and, and running to be in the presence of God. But now they've disobeyed God. They've brought sin into the world. And now they are ashamed and they try to cover their nakedness. And now they are ashamed and they try to hide from God because of sin. And God asks them, he says, what, what is it that you've done? They confess to God. And God has to do something about their shame this is a very important thing. God killed an animal. And the Bible doesn't tell us what kind of animal it was. He killed the animal and, and he took the skins from the animal and made Adam and Eve clothing to cover their nakedness. This is very important. The first animal that was ever killed was by God. Adam and Eve had all of their nutritional needs met in the Garden of Eden from the trees that were in the Garden of Eden. And when they disobeyed God and brought sin into the world, they tried, to, they tried to cover up their shame. They tried to cover up their sin. But the only way that their sin could be covered up, the only way that their nakedness, their shame could be removed was by the shedding of blood. Something had to die. An animal died to cover their shame and nakedness. And that continues all the way through the, New, through the Old Testament, rather. Cain and Abel, later on in the book of Genesis, Cain and Abel come and bring a sacrifice to God. And, and Cain's sacrifice was of vegetables from his garden. And, and Abel's sacrifice was of a lamb from his flock. And I know there's a lot of theological debate about the significance of the two sacrifices and, and Cain's sacrifice, whether or not it was acceptable because of his attitude or because of the content of it. I'm telling you today, I believe that Cain's sacrifice was rejected because it was not a sacrifice with blood. Something had to die in sacrifice to, to hold back the wrath of God, to cover the sin. The Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. And if you've read the Old Testament, all the way through the Old Testament, 
All the way through the Old Testament, the children of God had to make sacrifices. They had to sacrifice a lamb or had to sacrifice a a pigeon or a dove. and, And there were different sacrifices for different things. And all throughout, have you ever noticed this? All throughout the Old Testament, there was a sacrifice, a shedding of blood for every sin. Why? Because the wages of sin is death. The cost or the penalty of sin is death. And all throughout the Old Testament, all of those animals that died, whose blood was shed, those sacrifices were imperfect. Not one of them was a complete sacrifice. Not one of them was a total sacrifice. Not one of them was a sacrifice that could actually atone for sins. But what those sacrifices did was they held back the wrath and anger of God until the perfect sacrifice would come. The reason we need the gospel is because of death. Because death comes to all people and because the wages of sin is death. The reason that we all need the gospel is because we're all sinners. Let me say that again. We are all sinners. The Bible says there is none who is righteous, no, not one. The Bible says that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says that our righteousness is as filthy rags. The Bible says all we like sheep have gone astray. Each one has turned to his own path. We're all sinners. You say, well, preacher, I'm not that bad of a sinner. I'm, you know, I'm sure I've done some things I should not have. I'm not that. I don't know, I don't know preacher, if I would call me a sinner or not. Well, I want you to know today that I call myself a sinner. A sinner. And I can tell you in truth that you are too. You say, preacher, I'm a good person. Are you? Let's take a little test to see if you are a good person. Have you ever... Have you ever told a lie? Nod your head like this. Guess what that makes you and me? Liars. Are liars good people? Have you ever stolen anything? Anything, however small. Have you stolen something? That makes us a thief. We've all stolen something. So we're liars and we're thieves. Uh, We're not going to do crowd participation on this one, okay? Have you ever committed adultery? Well, Jesus tells us that if we look at another person with lust in our heart, that we have committed adultery in our heart. Have we all done that? Yeah, we all, we all have. Don't look at me spiritual like you're better than everybody. <laughs> have you ever murdered anybody? Yeah, we have. Jesus says, if you look at your brother... With hatred in your heart, you have committed murder in your heart. Folks, do you realize this? That means that we are all liars, thieves, adulterers, and murderers. None of us can say we're a good person. We are all sinners. Every one of us. And the wages, the cost, the penalty of sin is death. And so because we are all sinners, death comes to all people. We need the gospel because of the reality of death. The reason we need the gospel is death. But number two, the results of believing the gospel is life. The verse I read to you at the beginning For the wages of sin is death, comma, but. And I praise the Lord for that comma and but. Because the next thing Paul says here is, The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? So we need the gospel because of death. And when we believe the gospel, He gives us life. You say, well... 
The penalty of sin is death, and I'm a, a sinner. And so what can take away this penalty, friends? I told you about the sacrifices all throughout the Old Testament, right? The lambs and the sheep and the doves and the pigeons, all the sacrifices. And they were all imperfect sacrifices until the perfect sacrifice came. His name was Jesus, the Son of God. He was a perfect sacrifice because born of the Virgin Mary, lived a perfect, sinless life. Fulfilled the Father's command, the Father's perfect purpose perfectly. Jesus died for us. Jesus died for you. Jesus was nailed to that old rugged cross. And Jesus was despised and rejected. Jesus was beaten and He was scourged. That Jesus had the hair of His beard pulled out and mocked and was beaten. And Jesus had the crown of thorns placed upon His head. And Jesus was there naked on the old rugged cross, there in shame for all the world to see. And He died having the spear thrust through His side and the blood and the water flowed. Jesus died for you. And Jesus died for me. The wages, the cost of sin is death. But Jesus died for you. He paid the price for you. He took the bill that you owed. And He wrote upon it, paid in full. Hallelujah. He he took the, the sin debt that we had placed on our shoulders. That we were going to die not only mortally, but die eternally in hell. And He took the debt that we owed. And by His death on the cross, paid it in full. The Bible describes this for us in another of Paul's epistles. In the book of Ephesians, in chapter 2, we read these words. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you previously walked according to the ways of this world, according to the ruler who exercises authority over the lower realms, the spirit now working in disobedient. Verse 3. He says, we too all previously lived among them in our fleshly desires, carrying out the inclinations of our flesh and thoughts. And we were by nature children under wrath, as the others were also. But verse 4, hallelujah, but God, I'm going to say that again, all that bad stuff, but God, who is rich in mercy, because of His great love that He had for us, made us alive with Christ. Even though we were dead in trespasses, you are saved by grace. Together with Christ Jesus, He also raised us up and seated us in the heavens, so that in the coming ages He might display the immeasurable riches of His grace through His kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For you are saved by grace through faith. And this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not from works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Friends, Jesus died for you, so that the results of your sin are not placed on you, but were placed on Him. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son That whoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible says, but God demonstrates His own love for us in this. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Folks, do you realize that? That God loves you. That God knows who you are. That God knows everything about you. And He loves you so much that He gave His Son Jesus to bear all of that burden. And to die on the cross of Calvary, on the old rugged cross, to pay for your sins and to pay for my sins. That's good news. That's the message of the gospel. The reason that we need it is death. The results of believing it is life. And I praise God for the message of the gospel. If you don't hear anything else in all the other sermons I've preached in that series, I want you to hear the simple message of the gospel. The message of the gospel is the love of God. 
The message of the gospel is the old rugged cross. The message of the gospel is the empty tomb. The message of the gospel is sins forgiven. The message of the gospel is eternal life. The message of the gospel is relationships restored. The message of the gospel is mansions in heaven. The message of the gospel is fellowship with believers. The message of the gospel is the unity of the church. The message of the gospel is strength for the today and the message of the gospel is hope for tomorrow that is the message of the gospel and it is good news it was good news for ancient man it was good news for your grandmama it was good news in the last generation and it's good news today and it will be good news for these boys and girls who are growing up in this church it's the good news for America it's the good news for Canada it's the good news for the whole world it's the good news for everyone That God loves you and gave Jesus to be your Savior. It's the message of the gospel. Hallelujah. Have you believed the gospel? Have you believed the gospel? You've heard it today. And you've heard it in the weeks that have passed. But have you believed the gospel? That time comes for every one of us when we are confronted, when we are faced with that decision. Uh, The Lord Jesus was with His disciples, and, and He asked His disciples, He said, Who do men say that I am? And they responded, Some say that you're Elijah, and some say... You are John the Baptist, and and others say that you're one of the prophets. Come back from the dead. And then Jesus said this. He asked them this question. He said, But you, but you, who do you say that I am? You see, that's a personal decision. That's a personal question that you and you alone have to answer. Have you believed the gospel? I'm not asking you if you've joined a church, I'm not asking you if you're religious. I'm not asking you if you tithe. I'm not asking you if you're in Sunday school. I'm not asking you any of these good but extraneous things. I'm asking you the simple question. Have you believed the gospel, the good news, that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and mine, and that He rose again, that He ascended into heaven and one day is returning to judge the living and the dead? You say, Pastor... I believe the gospel. I want to be saved. I want to know today that Jesus is my Savior and heaven will be my home. Well, friends, I'm so happy for you. Today I want to tell you this. The Bible says not only that the wages of sin is death. The Bible says not only but the free gift of God is eternal life. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And if you will believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved, for everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's what the Bible says in Romans chapter 10. The Bible says in the book of Acts, what are you waiting for? Rise up and be baptized, washing away your sins by calling upon his name. That's what the Bible says. If you believe the gospel, today be saved. Today, in this invitation, come forward, confess Christ as Lord, be baptized. Today, join this church. Today, make a fresh and new commitment to God. Today, come to the altar and pray for someone that's on your heart, a burden for a lost soul. Today, get it right with God. The news is too good. The news is too good to ignore the good news of the gospel. The good news is too good not to share. Share that gospel with someone this week. Heavenly Father, we thank you for good news. Uh, We know the bad news of death. Uh, But Lord, the good news makes it almost not even matter. The good news is so good that the bad news is not that bad. Thank you for the good news of the gospel. We thank you for your son Jesus. We thank you for eternal life. We thank you for your mercy, your forgiveness, your grace. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you stand? And as we sing, now's your time. You come.